हे भास्कर दिसाइड एंड टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट हाउ टू डिफाइन कॉलम इक्वेलेंसी इट्स वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टू अंडरस्टैंड दैट इन केस इफ द स्पेसिफाइड कॉलम इज नॉट अवेलेबल हाउ वन कैन कंप्लीट द एनालिसिस बाय यूजिंग द अल्टरनेटिव कॉलम सो दीज आर द फोर इंपॉर्टेंट पॉइंट्स दैट टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक व्हाई कॉलम इक्वेलेंसी इज रिक्वायर्ड हाउ टू प्रूव कॉलम इक्वेलेंसी Uh, what is the usp approach in proving the column equivalency and what is the role of five organic compounds in proving the column equivalency and the point number 1 is why column equivalency study and here is the reason number 1 in case if column manufacturer stops the manufacturing of the column and if you do not have the alternative column in place how you are going to conduct the analysis so this becomes a very important reason for you to have the alternative column in place that you are using unavailability of specified brand of the column some sometimes the column may not be available you know it is available in us europe but it is not available in india the third the column containing same stationary phase but manufactured by different companies can have different pick order pick shape resolution retention etc so in case if the c18 column manufactured by phenomenex waters it can be completely different from one another and that is the reason for you know proving the column equivalency in case if the specified proposed column is not available with you so how to prove the column equivalency is the big question now and let us understand these six important parameters right if you prove that my column is having the similar or identical values for the six column selectivity parameter that we are going to discuss now you can very much justify that yes the alternative column is the equivalent column the usp approach i am referring to the uh, stimuli article uh, in the pharmacopeial forum volume number 31 to and according to this article these are the six important parameters against which you can justify that yes my column is equivalent equivalent the first one is relative retention the second one is hydrophobicity the third one is steric interaction the fourth and fifth can be hydrogen bond activity and hydrogen bond basicity due to selenol groups and the sixth one is relative selenol ionization or cation exchange capacity so let us understand you know this relative retention time is very very important and it is one of the very important criteria mentioned probably by your analytical method or maybe into the usp monograph so understand that unless and until you have some relatable relative retention time your stationary phase may not be equivalent in case if there are differences in stationary phase in terms of its polarity you will have a different relative retention time or sometimes the change in the complete selectivity so understand whether you have a similar relative retention times the second important parameter is the hydrophobicity or the h see the hydrophobicity is very important parameter as per as the retention based on the reverse phase chromatography is concerned the non polar stationary phase retains non polar compounds for longer time and the non polar phase non polar stationary phase will not retain polar compound for longer time so how this hydrophobicity gets increase so the increase uh, of the hydrophobicity can be seen because of the increase in carbon chain or increase in carbon load or even in the once you reduce the pore size Hmm. So the C4, C8, and C18. So between these three, st three stationary phases, now which one will have a greater hydrophobicity? Of course, C18 because it is the uh, the longest carbon chain within these three examples. More is the carbon load, more will be the hydrophobicity, and smaller is the pore size, more will be the hydrophobicity. The third important parameter. Hmm. which is going to define your column equivalency is the steric interaction or the s star so on to which parameter the steric interaction depends 
see the steric interaction is what how your molecule is going to get approached by the stationary phase now because of the stationary phase is long branched your molecule may not get penetrated inside the stationary phase and it can have the limited interaction or in case if your stationary phase is not branched not long your molecule can get straight onto the stationary phase and can start interacting with the stationary phase so the steric interaction of uh, your stationary phase can have a limited axis with the compound of interest or it can have the selective interaction based on to the molecular structure of your compound so it's very important parameter so the column steric interaction increases as the bonded phase becomes more crowded you are going to make now the uh, the case uh, 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 type structure and it is going to be very very selective now then so the more is the branched stationary phase more is the steric interaction possible and you will have a selectivity coming out of the different molecular shape and the structure increase in uh, steric interaction for increased chain length so the steric interaction can also get increased because of the increased chain length so we have two important parameters as per as steric interaction is concerned the first one is the crowded uh, branched stationary phase and the longer stationary phase can have the more steric interactions the parameter number 4 and 5 will be discussed together and it is hydrogen bond acidity which is a and hydrogen bond basicity which is b due to silanol groups we all know that there are unreacted silanol groups available on to the any bonded stationary phase and this silanol groups brings this uh, acidity or basicity so let us talk about the first parameter that is hydrogen bond acidity that is a so when this a gets increased this a is greater for more acidic which is type a silica columns so the older silica is called as the uh, silica a which is impure silica and those kind of silicas are very highly acidic in the nature and they will have the high hydrogen bond acidities the column with larger values of a preferentially retain basic compounds like amines and amides and this becomes the you know very uh, very much reason why your amines amides or basic compounds will have a lot of telling because of the secondary interaction coming uh, coming out of hydrogen bond acidity the second type of uh, hydrogen bond activity is the basicity right that is the hydrogen bond basicity due to silanol groups so b is a greater for more acidic or type b silica columns so nowadays no one used the traditional type a silica but people are using now the type b silica and for this you may have the hydrogen bond basicity uh, greater with the more pilica more pure silicas the columns with larger values of b preferentially retain acidic compound so if you look at the difference between uh, a and b the a component will retain basic compound for longer time and b component of your stationary phase will retain acidic compound for the longer time so in case if your compound is having uh, acidic and basic functional groups now this parameter is going to define a selectivity the sixth parameter that is relative silanol ionization or cation exchange capacity that is c negative charge silanols retains positively charged base so in case if your silanols are ionized right in case if they are o minus and h plus that is si oh is the silanol right this hydroxy group is the silanol groups now which is active and in case if the oh undergoes dissociation becomes si o minus and then h plus so there is h plus available which can get replaced by the another cation like protonated base like bh plus so the h plus will go away and the bh plus will sit on to the stationary phase 
So this is the way the retention of uh, a positively charged base can happen onto the negatively charged silanols. Negatively charged silanols repels negatively charged acid, right? Because this H plus will never get replaced by the another acid, right? And hence it will repel the negatively charged acid. And the third one is the column ionization and Fallus opsi increases as mobile phase pH increases. So the straightforward relationship is the more is the percent ionization of silanol group, the more will be the cation exchange capacity. So in which pH you will have the more ionization? As we know that the silanols are acidic in the nature. So in which pH you can have the more ionization for silanol groups? obviously into the basic pH, right? So in the higher pH range. So in case if you have the higher pH, you will have the higher cation exchange capacity values. So these are the six important factors which are going to determine your columns equivalency. As, per, as proposed by USP, you know, the USP has uh, considered these five important organic compounds to understand the columns equivalency uracil ethyl benzene toluene quinazarin and amitriptyline so let us understand why these four or uh, five compounds have been selected and here is the reason why the uracil have been selected uracil is an indicator of the void volume in liquid uh, chromatography column which is required to calculate the retention factor so the unretained uh, compound is the uracil right so i am sure that you must have also been used uracil to calculate the wide volume of the column so this is the purpose of using the uracil to calculate the retention factor or k prime now why ethyl benzene and toluene has been used and have a look over here the retention of uh, these compounds can be considered to result primarily from solvophobic interaction. And I will also explain what is meant by solvophobic interaction. But let us understand, you know, uh, or let me explain what is meant by solvophobic interaction and then we move ahead with the presentation. The solvophobic theory attains attempts to explain interactions between polar solvents and the non-polar sol so solutes, right? Now, in case of reverse phase chromatography, what is the nature of our mobile phase or the solvent? It is polar in the nature. And our analyte, if it is a non-polar, it actually mimics the solvophobic interaction. So in this case, your mobile phase is going to be polar. And we are talking about the ethyl benzene or toluene they are absolutely non-polar compounds. <clears throat> the retention of non-polar components such as ethyl benzene provides a measure of column retentiveness or the column strength. Now what is the column strength in case of reverse space chromatography? How much column can retain the non-polar compounds? So in case if the column retains ethyl benzene for longer time, that the column has the good amount of hydrophobic characteristics. And the third one is the toluene is used as a marker for calculation of column efficiency or theoretical plates. The next one is the cunizarin. So why USP might have selected cunizarin? And here is the explanation. The cunizarin is a metal chelating reagent. So in case if a column containing some metal uh, molecules like uh, iron or zinc or aluminum this can be detected indirectly with the support of cunizarin the retention of cunizarin is expected to be indicative of the presence or absence of metals in the column stationary phase low activity towards chelating reagent is indicated by symmetric peak shape and high activity towards chelating reagent is indicated by asymmetric peak shape so in case if you are having the greater amount of uh, retention for the cunizarin, you can say that there may be some presence of metals which are having the interaction with the cunizarin. In case if you compound, I mean if the, the picture of cunizarin is completely symmetric, means there is a low 
amount of metal ions present onto the stationary phase. But in case if you have the asymmetric peak shape for cuneiform, you can conclude that there must be a presence of some metal ions because of which the peak shape of cuneiform is now asymmetric in the nature. The last compound proposed by USP is the amitriptyline. So this amitriptyline is a basic compound having peak shape of around 9.4. and it can be a good indicator of selenol activity we all know that the basic compound will have a good amount of interaction with the selenol groups so this is the purpose of using this five compound to assess the equivalency nature of the column uh, as per as the usp i am sure that you must have got some idea on what is the reason for using these five different compounds by usp to prove the column equivalency and how one can just how one can prove the column equivalency with the six selective parameters so thank you very much for watching this video and i will meet you soon with such kind of very useful and informative videos till then take care and bye bye